All right, so uh, welcome back. And uh, in this video, we're going to start sifting through the material from the optics presentation, the uh, sixth lecture on the third week. And um, <clears throat> just a heads up, this specific topic seems to be kind of a rough patch for the students because it is a very physical presentation. It, it has a lot of physics in it. And we can actually break it down to make it seem uh, and uh, more intuitive and thus easier to understand and work with. So first of all, always give credit where credit is due to Professor Janusz, which prepared this presentation we are going to be uh, working with. So thank you, Professor. And uh, we're going to start working on the very basics, uh, defining the Snell law, what, what does that mean, what are thin lenses, and uh, image formation. And again, this is the very basics. So let's get started. Snell's law. What we need to understand is uh, light has different speeds in different mediums. So let's just say I have a block of glass here and, um, and anything above it, this is air all around it. So what is going to happen is we can imagine that there is specific density to a glass that is more dense than the air around it. This is, this is probably very intuitive to understand. What may not be as intuitive to understand is that light is going to considerably slow down as it's coming into the glass. It's going to slow down. And this is very, very important to understand. By the way, this drawing that I'm going to work with right now is the same one from the presentation here. This one. Okay, this is what we're working with. And this is what, what we're going to make a point to understand. So this is air. This is glass. And I know that being that glass is more dense, <coughs> light is going to slow down as it's going through it. And if you need a, an everyday example, if you take a glass of water, and you have water in it, and you have a straw, and you look from the side, it seems like the straw would kind of break inside the water. And all that really is going on is that light takes a longer to travel through glass. And this, there's a, there's a, a property we need to discuss here is called the uh, refractive index. So refractive index, refractive index, is basically an, an a quantity, a physical quantity that says by how much is this uh, specific material that I have going to affect the light travel through it. So this specific material, this glass, is going to have a specific uh, ref uh, refractive index. We can note it by n b and air is going to be an A. Now the light is going to go from this point, the uh, from air, and it's going to travel through the glass. And as it travels through the glass, it bends. It is always a good idea to draw what we call the normal. The normal is at 90 degree point, 90 degree angle, sorry, 90 degree angle to the actual incidence of the uh, incoming or incident angle to the material itself. means that if I had a small curve here and I'm going into the material at this point, my angle at 90 degrees, my, my normal here would be at 90 degrees to this point. It would be roughly around here. This is the 90 degree point. So this is what I mean by a normal. And you can look it up. Maybe it will be easier for you to understand if you see different images of it. Basically, this is the normal, 90 degrees. It's all good. Now, we said that the light is going to slow down as a function of the refractive index of the material it is currently propagating through. And it's going to slow down. And then it's going to exit to the other end. Obviously, when it's going through a speed x here, it is going to resume the same speed when it comes out the other end. Now, that's not as important to understand right now. This angle. This is the incident angle. Incident, you can think of it as incoming. And this angle is the refractive angle. And what we mean by reflection is basically the rays that reflect off the surface. This is reflection. What we're going to be dealing with is the incident ray and the refractive ray just to understand Snell's law. 
Snell's law, all that Snell's law said, says is that there are, there's a relationship between this angle and this angle. And it's a relationship that also is depicted by this refractive index and this refractive index. And it kind of makes sense because if I have a very, you can see, a very strong refractive index, light is going to be bent more. So there's definitely a correlation between these two parameters. Basically, what this law says, I'm just going to write it down here, hopefully I remember it correctly. Let's just say that uh, the sine of I over the sine of R, and by I, I mean this angle, and by R, I mean this angle. You can think of it as uh, refraction and reflection equals the uh, the uh, ref refractive index of the material it is going to over the refractive index of the material it was coming from. And this is basically the relationship that we can expect between the two. And this is what's really important to understand. Um, if you were to ask me, were students uh, required to uh, calculate using this law in the biophysics course, I would say no. I have never heard of it, but it is a minimal, and I've heard um, there has been a rumor of it being asked as a minimal just to know the formula for it. That would be enough and to explain that this is basically our relationship. And why is there a change in the angle here? The change in the angle, or angle occurs because light is slowing down as it gets into a denser material or a material with, uh, with a bigger uh, refractive index. And this is basically what we need to know about Snell's law, the relationship between the incident and refractive angles when light passes through two boundaries of two materials with different refractive angles. I know this may be a little overwhelming, so take your time and even rewind to go through the uh, basics of understanding Snell's law. It is not too bad when you break it down. Let's keep going and we're talking a little bit about thin lenses. What are thin lenses? And when we say thin lenses, we basically mean simple lenses. They're very complex lenses, but we're going to only focus on thin lenses and uh, it's a good thing that we are going to. There are basically two lenses. It's going to draw both of them. And also these are, we're going to be working with them um, in the lab. There we go. So this is a converging lens. I'm going to show you how it works in a second. Or a convex lens. And this is a diverging lens, diverging. Or uh, convex, this is convex for converging, this is the same and um, concave, concave is diverging. These are the same terms for each. Okay, you may see them interchangeably. And basically, if I pass, this should be a little bit more symmetrical right here, but it's, it's not a big deal, you can, I, you can envision it. But we have uh, what we call an optical axis, which is the, the axis that goes right through the lens in the middle of it. This is the middle of the lens, we have the optical axis. For now, uh, now that we know what the optical axis is, we know what the middle of the lens is, we know what converging and diverging, basically what we need to know is how these, how these lenses work. Let's just say I have a bunch of uh, incoming rays right here. Basically, they're going to pass through the lens, and they're going to meet here on the other end. There you go, trying to get it as neat as possible at this point. Now what's important to see here is that, first of all, the converging lens actually converges the light rays into uh, one single spot. And soon we'll see that in this lens, actually, why would we do it now? In this lens, if I have incoming parallel rays, you should know this, first of all, that the one that goes right through the uh, uh, optical axis is not, does not change its course, but all these rays are going to be uh, deflected. There we go. So this is, this diverges uh, the incoming rays, and this converges the incoming rays. 
what we need to understand that each lens has a focal point. What is the definition of a focal point? The definition of a focal point is that any ray of light entering the lens parallel to the optical axis means that it's parallel to this line right here, parallel to the optical axis, will go through the focal point, or any light ray going through the focal point will exit the lens parallel to the optical axis. And you're saying, hey, there's no focal point here. Something doesn't add up. The actual the fact of the matter is that you can have a focal point in either virtual lens, only the focal point is going to be here. This is going to be my focal point. Also, what you need to know about focal points is that they exist in in set distances. This is the same distance as this. And this is the same distance as this. And you have focal points on both sides of the lens. And each lens has its specific focal point. The focal point only changes from lens to lens. And this is what we basically need to know about thin lenses. And we're going to use this converging lens to see how we can form an image. So this is thin lenses. We discussed focal point. By the way, this is the focal distance. This is the focal distance, the, the distance between the focal point and the center of the lens. Also the focal distance. And these, obviously, these distances are going to be the same because the distance from one side to a focal point and the other side to a focal point is always the same for thin lenses or simple lenses. So let's see what, we're, uh, what we have stored for us next. The formation of real versus virtual image. First of all, I want to make sure that I know that this is formation of real image. And I'm going to explain it, I promise. It's only very important to me that I don't uh, neglect to write it down here. What is a real image? The definition of a real image is an image that is formed from an object, or rather that the um, outgoing rays from the objects, these are the outgoing rays that come from the objects, converge on the other end to an actual uh, converging point of light rays to form an image. And you, you would say, when would these rays not converge? That doesn't make any sense, but we're going, to, we're going to explain it at length. What you need to know is, for real image, light rays, all these guys that are coming in from the object, converge on the other end at a point. And obviously, when we're trying to figure out what, uh, how to draw an image, if you are ever needed to. First of all, the easy way is to say, okay, we're just going to take one, one ray that is going parallel to the optical axis and goes through the focal point. Very good. One that goes through the center and remains unchanged. And one that goes through the focal point and comes out parallel, which is exactly what we said for the definition of what a focal point is. Now, a very important thing in understanding is where is the object relative to the focal point. You can see that the object is further away from the focal point than the lens. Or you can say that the focal point is between the object and the lens. And that's super important to understand for real image. So I'm going to write it down, real image. I'm going to just make a point to write it down. Um, outgoing rays from object. Um, object converge on the other side of the lens. That's important to understand, on the side of lens. Number two is that the focal point, focal point is between the object and the lens. What I mean by that is this focal point, oh, that was a little bit messy. This focal point is between the object and the lens. And you'll see why it's important in a second. Also, what we need to know about real images, and just, just to touch base here, this is an object and this is an image. This is what's created by, ref by reflecting this up against a lens. Okay? So, as far as the image, the image would be a real image. It's 
you want to understand. A real image would be larger, as you can see. This image is larger than the object, and it would also be inverted. This would be a real image. So these are the characteristics of a real image. And you, you, you might be wondering, hey, what do you mean? Uh, I know that I see real images with my eye every day. Both eyes show me real images. They don't show me virtual images. So how is it that all the images are upside down? Because I know I don't see people walking in the street upside down. The answer to that is that you, in fact, are seeing everything upside down. The thing is that the organ that interprets the information that comes from the eye is our brain. And for the same reason that you don't see everything double, hopefully, because you do have two eyes and two lenses, is because our brain actually analyzes the information. And you can think of it as our brain has a mechanism of flipping everything back, so we'll see everything upright. Okay? So this is what's important to understand. Inverted is a real image. And I'm only saying that because now we have something to compare it to, and this is also from the lecture slide. This is a virtual image. We're going to compare the two parameters. Virtual. Virtual image. And a few things you will have to accept on faith here as far as when this happens in everyday life. It's not very intuitive because it's hard for us to describe the situation, but let's start from scratch. First of all, we said that we have we have um, we can draw a light ray coming from the focal point exiting parallel, a uh, parallel ray going through the focal point, and you can actually see a trend that light rays coming from the object are actually they're actually diverged. They're not getting closer together. They're getting further apart from one another. These two rays are getting further apart from one another as they pass through the lens. So first thing, <coughs> the actual rays do not converge at a point after the lens. So we can say outgoing, outgoing rays from the object. object diverge from the other side, from the side of lens. Very good. And this is apparent to us here. These rays are further apart. Perfect. Let's take a look at the other parameters that we had set for the video image. We were discussing the focal point. So let's see what the focal point is doing here at this point. Let's take a look at the focal point. And before, the focal point was between the object and the, uh, the lens. So this is where the focal point was before. But notice where it is now. The focal point here is past the object. The focal point here is past the object. And that is, in effect, is changing this whole scenario. So focal point, focal point is on the far side, so to speak, due to lack of uh, better terminology at the moment, is on the far side of the object. Or you can actually say that the object is between object between the focal point and the lens, which is a better a better um, definition. Let's see what we else we also have the image orientation. So we can first of all right out the bat we can see that the image here, the image is not inverted anymore. It's upright. The image is upright, and the image is also larger. So virtual image is going to be um, larger and upright. And that's the real difference here. And you may pop up and ask, hey, um, if I just take this object and I move it and I put it here where the focal point is between the object and the lens, am I suddenly going to see a real image just like the one that we saw? Yes, the answer is yes. If you move the object to the point where the focal point is between the object and the lens, you will see a real image. So 
and real quick I'm going to just try and explain to you what is going on or when you can see it in everyday life and this is a virtual concept but basically you can you can look at yourselves as you're looking at yourself and this is me and I'm looking at a mirror this is a mirror this is not a very good depiction of a mirror let's try again this is my mirror and I'm looking at myself in the mirror so to speak there is no real object on this side of the mirror. There is no real object. There's, there isn't any light rays that converge at a certain point because that point is virtual and does not exist. And also this explains why the distance here, why there's a distance here. If I take a look, let's say I'm taking a side. This is a, this is a, a profile. Oh my god, this is a horrible profile. But this is a guy with a hat. He's looking that way. And he has a mirror here. What he will see is himself on this side looking back at him. So it would seem to the observer that even though he is only, let's say, one meter away from the, uh, from the, um, from the mirror, that the object he is looking at is two meters away. And this is all just a virtual image. There is no real, this, this point, this point does not exist. There aren't really light rays that converge in this point. That does not exist. I know this is not very intuitive. It's kind of hard to explain how virtual phenomena really are perceivable in everyday lives. But this is the best I can do. Hopefully, um, you can only just focus on remembering all of these things, and you'll be good. Just difference between, and it's important to understand, where is the object relative to the focal point? how the image looks and what the rays do when they come out of the lens. Do they go far apart or, or do they come together? That's what we need to understand as far as the basics of formation of uh, virtual and real images. Okay, we're on our way. And I just want to touch on the this formula here that is in the presentation just because it's in the minimals and it's really really simple I promise let's just say um, but what this basically says is there's a focal you know, focal uh, distance this is the focal distance and I'm just going to go to these images and show you what that is the distance of the image the distance of the object now let's see what it is let's take the other Let's take this because it's not as messy. This is the focal distance. This is the focal distance. Being that this is my object, this is my object distance, and this would be my image distance. And basically, if I plug all these variables into this equation, I can solve for one of these. Usually, we want to solve for f. Usually, we want to find the focal uh, distance, and that's what you are going to be required to find in the uh, labs. If we have, if we know how far the image is and how far the object is, we can solve for the focal distance of the given simple lens. And this diopter is just a measurement that characterizes um, physical relationship to vision, and that's why it's usually referred to in physics. And this is an everyday life term. Diopter is just an inversely proportional relationship with the focal point. So if I say that I have a focal point uh, of three meters, my diopter is going to be this measurement. That's all you really need to know. So basically this is going through the very simple uh, ideas of how images are formed. And if you really understand this video, and if you don't, you can take your time and watch it again and uh, read some material if, you, if this is not enough for you. But if you understand these topics that we reviewed, Snell's Law, um, Index of, uh, of Refraction, uh, Thin Lenses, Convex, uh, Concave, or also um, Converging, Diverging, uh, what's the difference between a real image and a virtual image, this is pretty important to understand. If you understand these basics that we just broke apart to make simple, then you are good to go uh, for the next uh, few things that we need to focus on. Hopefully you have found this helpful, and I will see you in the next video.